Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and today's video, a bite-sized study sesh on dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. We're going to kick off today with an MCQ followed by a very short tutorial and in that process you'll be able to tick this topic off your list. Let's jump right in. Before we jump into today's video, I wanted to make sure that you knew about our free GN tutorial. It's basically a cheat code for learning GN and I want you to have it. If you haven't already, then go ahead, click that link and claim your free GN tutorial. Okay, before we do the mini tube, I wanted you to try this MCQ. So press pause, commit to your answer and I'll see you in a tick. Answer is A and I'll explain it on the next slide. So with dialysis disequilibrium syndrome, this is basically a problem of neurological symptoms right after dialysis or during dialysis. And so it might be some things like a seizure, it might be confusion, it might be vomiting, something like that. And the absolute highest risk time is when patients are starting off on hemodialysis. So it's not going to happen in PD, it's not going to happen in filtration, it's very particular to hemodialysis. So before someone initiates on dialysis, they have quite high urea levels, but that urea is sort of spread evenly across the tissues. So the urea in the brain and the urea in the plasma will be much the same. And because they're much the same, water is not going to be pulled in any particular direction. So water is going to be even on both sides. But then if we do hemodialysis and we remove this urea aggressively from the plasma, what can happen is we reduce the plasma urea, but the brain urea levels are lagging behind. So the urea in the cerebral tissues is going to be higher than that of the plasma. And now water is going to behave differently. Water is going to be so magnetized to that urea in the brain tissue that it's going to go in there and that can lead to cerebral edema. So that can cause this uh, dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. And we, because we know about it, we do aim to prevent it. And so when, whenever we start someone on hemodialysis, we use a protocol that makes sure that we remove urea more gently than we normally would. So we'll um, put them on for typically just two hours and we'll do it at very low blood flow rates compared to what's normal. The next day we'll do three hours and then four hours. We just kind of build them up to their prescription and that tends to prevent this from happening. But we still see it on occasion and it's particularly in patients who are at extremes of age. So the pediatricians, I guess, might see it. And if they're very old age, then we might see it. But also if they've had a previous stroke or a brain injury in the past, they seem to be predisposed. So still something to know about. So that was dialysis disequilibrium syndrome. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you are studying for your written exam and you haven't already, be sure to head on over to our website to grab your free GN tutorial. It is the cheat code for learning GN for your exams and I want you to have it. So go on, head on over there, grab your freebie, and I'll see you again soon for some more high-yield learning. Bye!